It's been asked many times, Docker. How do I use Docker? Now, for an IT professional, it's almost an essential utility. And honestly, I would say it's almost an essential utility for anybody out there. There's so many cool things you can do with Docker, as I've addressed in the past couple of weeks, because you don't need a whole bunch of hardware. It is literally consolidated down into little containers, not virtual machines, but containers. So let's get into it. This is going to be a pretty a good one for anyone that's not familiar with Docker, what it does, how it functions. I'm just going to touch the basics here. I'm going to show you how to make a container because honestly, you're probably not going to need it. Docker has been so widely adopted that pretty much anything you can think up has already been done and you can just look it up on the internet. So let's get into it because uh, I love Docker so much and couldn't imagine life without it. To get started, we need to install Docker, right? Uh, installation can be a bit cumbersome when it comes to using the existing images and other things that Docker has in existing repos. Whether you're using Mac, Windows, Linux, I caution you, don't just do Docker or, or apt install Docker, or, or if you're on Windows, you're going into WSL and just saying install Docker. Uh, these things are bad because it's going to be an old version of Docker. You're going to have some incompatibilities with some containers. It just, it can turn into a nightmare. So when you look at these, I always recommend the official page. Like even on my little guide with all my quick commands and everything we're going to go over today, I say, hey, for the installation, go to the official docker.com and get it from there because I want you to always have a good experience, whether you watch this today or two years from now. So when you look at this, you'll notice here's the supported platforms for Linux here. Uh, the big thing when you're clicking through to install is remove docker-desktop if you have already installed it, clear out any files that maybe that old version left behind because we wanna make sure we have a really good base system. And then for the installation, we're downloading the actual package. Uh, if you're on Ubuntu or Debian, it's going to be a dev package. If you're on Fedora, it's going to be an RPM package. And you just follow and copy these commands uh, from what you've downloaded. Other things that we're going to tackle on this as well is Portainer. Portainer is really neat. Uh, it's a great way of just getting a heads up GUI and saying, okay, what containers do I have? All that right at a, a glance notice. And we're going to go through some of the cool aspects of containers and updating and other things that Docker does. But I will be touching on this, but I want to start with the actual commands, what Docker is, images and containers. First up, what's an image? Just think of it as like a downloaded zip file that just sits in your downloads folder and you're waiting to install that. Uh, the image is just uh, the thing that the container needs to be made. And then the container is your running environment. Now, depending on what's going on, that container just is a, a mirror of all the settings in the image unless you change things and map them from your host system. The container really doesn't change per se. It can You can modify stuff in that container, but on a refresh, it's going to wipe out those settings if it's not saved elsewhere outside the container and referenced. So very important to understand these things, and we're going to talk about that referencing but I wanna go into the actual commands with that basic knowledge understanding. You have the essential command Docker run that every single guide on the internet has. What does it do? Well, Docker run will download the image. It'll go Docker pull image. That's what's really running in that background. And then it will Docker start or install that container by using the run command. So it grabs the image, and installs the container all in one command. That's what Docker run does. And there's always triggers in, in things that are added to that command. And I wanna walk through some of those. First, naming the container. If you don't put a name, it's just gonna be some funky random name that it picks out. So I do recommend naming your containers, but it's not necessary if, if you're mainly using a GUI like me, a lot of times I just admit it. The next thing is any ports. How are, what, what's this doing? Is it just mapping to an existing port? Does it wanna use and do a bridge with the existing network on that system? Know that you can actually translate ports. Let's say you have five different Apache services or, or you're launching web servers and they all use port 80. 
that's problematic. There are going to be conflicts if they're all trying to use the same port, right? Well, cool thing about Docker and some of the power here is it can translate these ports. So you could take uh, the container port of port 80, that's the destination, and you could put for the host port 81, and then you could put 82, 83, 84, and make a ton of Docker containers, all of them using the container port of 80, but a different port on the host system. So when you launch into that Docker container, uh, it may be using port 80 in the container, but it'll use a completely separate port on the actual host system, which is great. And if you don't want to mess with any of that, you could just map all the ports and just say, hey, I want a complete bridge. If it's using port 80 over here on the host system, it uses port 80 and you just map all the ports uh, to, to basically bridge everything. So you don't have to worry about uh, network issues. And then finally, you can do like a, a daemon. So or a background service. And this just runs that image every time your system starts up and that's it. This is also a very essential command too with Docker is the dash V. What this does is occasionally you're gonna run into an out of date system. Like, like my port tainer here, I've added settings and other things into here. If I do an update to this image and relaunch this container using this image, it's gonna wipe out anything that's not mapped to my host system. So this is one command that is really essential with every Docker container. You use the dash V, you, you map that directory to your target directory in the container. And that basically just says, hey, when that image gets recreated, you're using that same Docker run command. And it's just saying, hey, yeah, this all this image is completely new, but that's okay. All the settings for the dash config folder is gonna be over here in my host and that never changed, even though we wiped out that whole container and relaunched it. That mapping of the local directory to a Docker container, if it's hosting any settings, you're gonna always want that mapping to occur. Otherwise, you'll change stuff and then relaunch that container and all of a sudden all your settings are gone. You're like, oh no, what happened? Well, you forgot to map the directory, so really important. And then managing it like a Docker PS command. Uh, usually whenever I'm running things, I mean, I want to teach you these command lines and not just installing port tainer or some management because it's really important for troubleshooting. So these basic commands just kind of get you by. And then I use port tainer really for a lot of the management, just quality of life. I find it a little easier. But having said that, there are times where I'm like, okay, what are my running commands? Docker PS. Or I could just do a dash A and say, hey, what show me all the Docker containers, even the offline ones that aren't necessarily spun up. And that's what that does. You can remove them with the RM command. You can stop and start the container. So let's say I wanted to stop the container, port tainer. So we'll just go Docker stop and then the container name. Let's break down this PS command too, just so you understand what you're looking at. You have the container ID, you have the image. This is the actual image I'm using of port tainer. You have the command that that image is running in there. You can see it was created 13 days ago. It's uptime is two hours. And then you see all the ports it's mapped. Now, obviously, this is pretty much a bridged network. It's using all the ports that Port Tainer needs. But I can map these to on the host system to something different, like I've explained. And then finally, the name right here is the container. So we'd want the name of the container. That last line is probably the most important thing. So when we go to Port Tainer stop, we stop that Port Tainer directory. So that web page, if I reloaded it, it would just so not found, it's not running. So if we do Docker PS, you see nothing's running and we do a dash A and you'll notice, oh, well, it's right there. So we want to start that up again. We'll just do a Docker start and then port tainers back up. And this all happens so darn fast that you, let's say we do a reload, you'll notice it, it's already back up. Dockers are so much faster than using a VM or anything. It's just magical. So obviously I've set all this up uh, port tainer. Let's just delete this. Let's, let's start over because I want you to have this nice GUI because it's so nice just to pop in here and go, okay, what images have I downloaded? What networks have I launched? What volumes and other stuff has Docker have? And this is all just a nice running image to where I'm always in here. And I'm like, okay, what containers I usually am on this page. I bookmark it usually and see what all I'm running as far as an image goes. So let's install our first one after removing uh, the existing port tainer. So to remove, again, we'll just do a Docker PS. Okay, well, this is running. We don't want that. Docker stop port tainer. 
stops it. We can do a Docker RM port tainer. Boom. Port tainer's gone. It's in the wind. So how do we download that image and install it? Well, we just do a Docker run. But where do we get that port tainer image? Well, this is, comes to the second link in my guide. If we look, uh, we go to the official port tainer website. Again, I want to show you the official documentation in case this ever changes in the future. You just come here. I'm installing it on Linux. What do I need to do? Okay, I need to create a port tainer volume. Now, a lot of times you don't create a volume just in containers thing, it's already here. Now, I've already created this volume, obviously that's what I was using. And then we just run this, we'll just use the community edition and hit copy, come back into our prompt and we'll just paste that in. Let's break down this command and everything it's doing really fast. So we have Docker run, it's mapping these ports. You got 8,000, 9443. So we know it's gonna use those two ports. It's naming it port tainer. It's restart always. So if something happens and it crashes, it's going to restart it. And then it's mapping the port tainer data volume to this in the actual container. So the dash V's are really important. If you don't use dash V's on in reinstalling or updating your containers to the latest versions, everything will be wiped out. I just have to reiterate that because newbies on to Docker will always forget this and then They'll make changes and then they update and then <laughs> disaster strikes. So we'll hit enter and this will go ahead, pull and install our port tainer again, and we'll relaunch it. So it should be already done. Let's do a PS. All right, it's up. We got the latest version. You can see the latest tag here and let's relaunch our port tainer. And for port tainer, I think it's actually localhost 443. And there we go. Now you'll notice I have to set a whole account name and password uh, as it didn't retrieve the environment variables. So I probably could have done a little bit more on my mapping, but I didn't, so oh well. And it's saying, hey, my password length was pretty small. We recommend a stronger one. I'm like, ah, whatever. So from here, we see the environments of local. Now on initial setup, you may get prompted, hey, do you want to create an environment or you just want to use local? You always just sit, click local setup and you never have any issues. Uh, if you're obviously, you, you can put port tainer outside of the host system, that's when you might use those other options. But a lot of times I just throw port tainer on whatever Docker system I am. Uh, there's other things like Kubernetes that may, maybe you might see in the comments. Kubernetes is great when you're building like a scaled environment and big business, but for everyone like a home lab user and stuff, uh, don't, don't worry about Kubernetes. It's just going to be too much trouble for you where Docker is just so simple and everything's kind of already there. It, it's awesome for just your one-off systems. Uh, when you get into like Docker Swarm and stuff, that's when you typically would move to Kubernetes and just say, okay, it's time to get with the big boys. But for most people, if you're watching a YouTube video about Docker, this, this is just fine. Just use your local. So we're going to go in here. Let's take a look at our images. What do we have? Oh, look at that. That's the old version of Port Tainer in our images. We could actually delete this. Why I love Portainer so much is it just gives everything a nice heads up so I can flush old images so it doesn't take uh, unnecessary 300 megabytes from my system. I can look at my existing containers, what's running, what ports it's using, its allocation. All those things are so nice and you can look at the stats of each one. How much memory are they using? Ah, it's just so well done. That's why I love Portainer. I always recommend everyone set it up because this is the, really the way to do it. And then I usually use my guides here to install. So let's uh, see what are, what else can we use Docker for? That's the other thing. So now I got your mind going, you got like a really good base understanding level. You got your cheat sheet over here to manage, install uh, all these images. That's great. If we have problems, you could look at the logs here. So let's say port tainer doesn't run. You could do a Docker log and then type port tainer because that's the container name of it. Uh, you can look at Docker stats, but let's install another one. Uh, what do people use Docker for? And that is, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. So you could do WordPress, you could do web stuff. That's typically the, the primary use for newbies to Docker. And then you get into more things like emulating entire systems like Ubuntu and CentOS and Fedora and all the Linux distros are great to run into here. Uh, probably the biggest one that I still need to make a video about is Alpine Linux. 
and it's really, really small footprint. They're great for Docker containers. You're going to run into a lot of Alpine in the Docker community, but you can install anything here. Look at this. You got Sonar. You should, uh, if you never want to pay for a streaming service again, you got to check out Sonar. That's not this Sonar, two R's, but I digress and uh, I can't mention any more than that. Shh. People aren't supposed to know about Sonar and Radar best kept secret for most people in IT. And then, uh, yeah, we got other stuff. Uh, the big thing uh, that a lot of things like Chrome OS really utilizes LXCE. These are Linux containers that are pretty much pre-built, ready to go a lot of times. So LXCE is a really fun one to dink, tinker with. But one I kind of wanted to touch on today is Dashi. This is a Docker one. Uh, I know Techno Tim did a video on Dashi, or I think it, would, I think it was him. And let's just copy this in here and take a peek. Now, 8080, I don't think we have any conflicts. Let's just make sure. Yeah, 8,009443 is what this one's using. Let's launch into and install Dashi. Now, Dashi is great for home lab users where you can have your own custom dashboard. That's really what it's for. And it's running into an error, probably because uh, it's trying to map my home folder, my dash conf YAML file, to the app public YAML file. That actually doesn't exist. Even though this failed, I think it still shows it's created. It just doesn't have that YAML file yet. So let's create that. So that's a good example of something that it installed and created the container and downloaded the image. But because of these settings, when we just did a copy paste without reading, uh, we missed something. And that's where these error messages can get a little convoluted. But if you really focus down and read, you can kind of see what the error is. Error mounting, home Titus, my conf YAML file right there is really our big problem. So let's create that real fast. So I'm gonna just go down to the config section right here. This looks like the YAML file that we need. Lissy 93, and I'm just gonna change all this to my user, Chris Titus Tech, and I'm gonna change that dashy. Uh, my Windows utility is probably the one I'm in the most. Let's change that. Uh, that'll show me GitHub and some issues. We can configure all these items in Dashi and, and how they, they utilize that. That's a pretty good idea. Uh, let's go to firewall. I put my firewall IP here. Uh, game server, if something I wanted to check to see if it was up, should be fine. So now that we have a YAML file, I bet we, if we come back into Portainer and we go to our dashboard, let's try and start this up again and see if it actually runs this time. And the cool thing from our portainer section, let's look at our logs. Okay, this one this time around, it doesn't look like we got any errors and it didn't stop the container immediately. The beauty of using portainer is I have all the logs right here, but if you don't and you're using it from a CLI, by all means, all that's right here in the cheat sheet as well. Coming back into our container section, it's starting up still and it should be 8080 is the port that's getting mapped to 80. All right, coming back into localhost 8080, you can see we have those things in there. If we click on it, it should launch into my GitHub. Okay, that's cool. What issues do I have going on with that? Uh, we got about 108 open right now. Need to get on that. And then if we had certain images or whatever we wanted to pull into here, we could have a nice heads up display. Again, check out Techno Tim's channel for that. Great guy for home lab stuff, but I wanted to just kind of touch on some of the importance of Docker. What other uses of Docker do you have? Because I have probably upwards of 15 Docker containers running in my current home environment. In business environments, this can get quite a bit uh, bigger. It just depends on what's going on, but it saves so much in resources, power, utilities, all of that. Love Docker, learn it, love it, live it. With that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.